Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're going to talk iSCSI today. We're going to talk about it with our MyCloud EX4 that the folks from Western Digital were kind enough to lend to the show. And what iSCSI is, is a more efficient way to connect to network drives over your network. It's a kind of a one-to-one -one connection, a block level kind of thing where your computer can mount this drive like it's on its own system, basically. It's almost like a direct connection, but uh, you've got an IP network in between. As such, uh, you can only really have one uh, connection to an iSCSI target at a time. And a target is basically an image file. I'm going to show you how all this works because it can get a little tricky. But I want to thank uh, Ertro, who was uh, watching the first review and suggested uh, the driver that we need to use on the Mac to get this to work. On Windows, this actually has uh, the iSCSI capability built in, I believe, on both Windows 7 and 8. So uh, what we're doing on the Mac here today is a little bit extra because you need to go get a driver because Apple still has not uh, included the iSCSI protocol into its operating system. So we're going to pop over to our control panel first. I'm going to show you how to configure this on the drive side. So you go over to storage, and right now we've got this in RAID 0 mode. So when we do our second video uh, update, it's going to cover the performance in RAID 0. This is scary RAID, so we don't want to have a drive failure right now. But um, you go down to iSCSI here, and uh, we have it turned on right now. We've got the protocol on. And right now I created a, a test drive. I'm going to create another one right now just for the sake of our test here. We'll call this test number two. And we'll uh, build it on our only volume we have here. And we'll just say maybe uh, 25 gigabytes. And we'll hit next. And I have to change this because it doesn't like uppercase letters. So we will fix that. <laughs> and then uh, we, we're not going to put security on, but you can actually encrypt it and have uh, security on the drive, so you, you, know, you would have to have a password to connect up with it if you wanted to do that. And I would cer certainly strongly suggest that if you're using it in any kind of environment where that is important. And that's it for actually creating the targets. It's pretty simple. Now, the important thing to note is that when we created this target, uh, it created a file on the hard drive. So if I were to connect to the drive through the traditional way, either through the MyCloud app or just over my network using a network sharing protocol like Samba or AFP, which is what's built into the Mac. Samba is the Windows protocol. Um, if I were to connect to uh, the drive in that fashion, I would just see the drive image, that big 25 gigabyte file. So when we connect to the target with the iSCSI driver, uh, that file will then become a virtual drive on the computer. So you lose the ability to get access to those files that are uh, in, the, in the drive or in that target through the traditional connection methods, but uh, they'll be there when you connect with iSCSI. You could, of course, share the iSCSI uh, image that was opened on the computer from the computer, and then you could have kind of the same uh, function as well. So it can get a little complicated, but think of these as like individual drive targets that you're connecting to. So the next thing we need to do is head over to Global SAN here in our, in our uh, system preferences. Now, this is a $90 driver for the Mac only. Windows, like I said, has this already, so you don't have to really futz around with that too much. Um, I'm running the demo right now, which will give you about two weeks of usage, so uh, you can get it up and running. Now, to connect to our drive, all we got to do uh, is just unlock the little padlock here to make some changes to it. And the mistake I made initially is I went to Target uh, to try to get this to work because that made the most sense to me, but that is not what you do. Uh, you go over to Portal and Group, and you just type in the IP address of your MyCloud drive, and ours right now is at uh, .0.116. Uh, we'll just call it MyCloud. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, you click Add. What it's going to do is connect over the network to our drive, and as you can see here, we have two shares that are available. Um, they're a little bit cut off here, but I, th I think you can see here's the test, the iSCSI test, which was the first one that was on the control panel when we popped in there. Uh, and here is the second one, which is test number two. And this is the one we want to connect up with. So what I'm going to do now is go over to iSCSI options. And the reason I'm here is that for some reason, if I don't check these off, it won't connect. <laughs> so um, that took a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, but if we go ahead and click uh, connect here, uh, we are green. And now uh, we have a note saying, hey, this is not recognizable by your computer. That is because uh, we've just connected a drive to the to the Mac. The Mac operating system thinks it's just had a drive plugged into it, and it says, this, this disk is not formatted. Do you want to format it? So we're going to say yes, and the reason is, is that it's going to format that drive image file on the MyCloud. So it's not formatting the MyCloud. It's just doing that little drive image. So we're going to say, go ahead and initialize that. Um, pull, it pulls up disk utility, and as you can see here, we have a 25 gigabyte Western Digital uh, iSCSI storage media. So we'll go over here to Erase. And we'll do the Mac OS format, and we'll call it test, or we'll call it iSCSI test, I guess. And hit erase. And we'll hit that again. 
and it's going to do its thing and now it is working over the network and as you can see it's mounted as a regular drive on our Mac here let's wait for it to finish formatting it's going to mount the disk and we should be good to go so I'm going to pop over to my finder here real quick and uh, if I go into my uh, list of available devices you can see here that it's showing up as a device it's almost like a physical connection Windows is also very simple. In fact, it's actually easier because the iSCSI initiator is built right into Windows. It's installed on your Windows 7 or Windows 8 PC right now. So if you do a search uh, in your Windows system there, it's usually a little bit easier on Windows 7 to do so. You just uh, type that in, start the service, which will add, it'll prompt you to do that. Uh, type in the IP address of uh, the device you wish to connect to, and uh, there you go. We are in here. We've got a Windows uh, directory already set up. I've connected to it. Uh, and now we're bounded to that drive. And in fact, if I go over to my computer management, uh, I can just pop open the disk management system here and go ahead and format that drive. In fact, it wants us to do that right now. So we'll just say, sure, go ahead and format that or get that partition ready. And we'll just make a new volume here, uh, format that. We'll give it uh, the drive letter. I have something on F usually, so we'll give it H. And we'll hit next, format it for NTFS. And it is going to be ready for our use. So. Pretty much, again, just like the Mac, it'll, it'll mount it as a regular disk, and as far as this computer's concerned, it is directly connected. What's cool is that when you are connected to this, like I said, we've got this mounted as an internal drive on our Mac, even though it's over the network. And uh, that means if you go ahead and erase the file, uh, it's going to keep it in the trash. As you know, if you typically when you have a file that you delete over the network, it usually deletes it immediately. But because the Mac thinks it's an internal drive, it's going to treat it as such. And that also gives you uh, the capability maybe to back some things up via time machine that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. It's a lot of neat things that uh, you can kind of work into it. The one problem, of course, is that you lose the ability to share that file I just dragged over with the rest of your network unless you share uh, that iSCSI target uh, from your Mac. I think you could also like kind of do a loop and reconnect the MyCloud to it, but again, you really only want to have one person connected to that iSCSI target at a time. So we're going to take a break now from this video. This one will end. Uh, and when this next video starts, the one right after this one, uh, we're going to look at the performance of iSCSI as well as just the regular standard network protocols to see if there's any speed difference. So uh, we will be right back with that. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.